Thank you, Alejandro. Yes, we are indeed with a very happy victor of today's round, the final round and his first victory in the event, Harshit. First of all, congratulations. We were expecting to see you a bit more often here in the studio with us, but finally you are here. How would you assess your event? Um, yeah, as Alejandro mentioned, um, I did not have one of the best events by far. Um, I had some good moments, but uh, there's it's at least nice to win the last round so that I don't end the event on a sour note. Well, let's go uh, through uh, this game. It seemed pretty smooth up until the end game. After mm -hmm. that, it was very topsy-turvy, let's say. We'll, we'll just take you to it because we were confused <laughs> by every move after that. Uh, it was a topsy-turvy game, up and up, and up but we, we got to this end game, which I, found, I find as a chess player, we're not going to go through all these uh, mistakes. Yeah, so uh, actually, a, a very tricky decision was if I could even take with the knight on e5. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I was not completely sure which one's better, but I felt that it would be nicer to have a, like, a pawn closer to the queen. So you cannot take on f4 after that. Yeah. Knight yeah. takes g2, king takes and g2 then because of knight g6. My idea was that. Um, so if he goes king to g7? Yeah. No, not here. <laughs> <laughs> After king takes g3. I got it. So I thought that if I go king f3, let's say, and if he ever goes h4, uh -huh. then I go um, f5, and uh, if I if I just get knight g4 next, uh -huh. um, he, he I was not sure how, how to assess, but this was another way to play it, and knight g4 and his king cannot really attack my pawn. Right, it's just boxed in by the powerful knight controlling the dark squares and the pawn controlling and the light squares. Mm -hmm. But you took with the pawn, tough to make these decisions on move 40 for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we got to this end game and I was going on and on and on on how lost this is for black. I was not sure if it's lost to be honest. And apparently it isn't. Yeah, because uh, so after um, knight c5, I, I mean bishop c1 was possible, I was not, I, I don't think that's a big mistake. And actually, it, actually it is it a big is. mistake. <laughs> yeah. You had to the go key bishop, move d2 was bishop, d2. Yeah. bishop d2. Bishop d2. Before, before no, no, king g7, I think, is still fine. Was it? Yeah. King g7 was still fine. Knight c5 and then bishop d2 anyway, right? In this position? Maybe not. No, no. You're right. Bishop to d2 first. I think it was bishop d2 first, that what we were looking mm -hmm. at. You go bishop d2 first, and the idea is that you force the move c3. But I was also briefly considering knight c I, I, I didn't calculate as it was. I mean, uh, I, the time control just finished, but I might even consider knight c5. But yeah, it's yeah and the thing is, even if I get these two connected past pawns because of the edge pawn, it should just be a draw. Mm -hmm, the counterplay. Yeah. And the thing, things started surging here after uh, the move bishop c1. Um, we were surprised by your move b3. Did you consider the move b4? Oh, yeah. Okay, now that I think about it, I played it in the game, and yeah. Okay, and b4, bishop d2? Uh -huh. b5. b5, yeah. So just, and then what happened in the game? Yeah. Bishop a5, knight b7, I kind of missed this. Right. You either pick up the bishop or this important pawn. Mm -hmm. b3, but well, you must have been happy, though, to see the move bishop b2 on the board. I, actually, I, was, I mean, I felt that it's very difficult to defend, because it, he has many options, like he could even go king f7, he mm -hmm. could... But I... But okay, I think that after b4, uh, I mean knight b7, bishop b5, b4, I'm just winning. Yeah, this one is winning, and you showed a very nice technique also here. Also, king g6 was... I mean, everything's losing already, yeah. so it doesn't matter much. Mm -hmm. But king g6, I agree, is a strange move not going towards the queen side. Uh, and after the move b5, you calculated this quite nicely. Actually, yeah, let's say if the king was on f6, I just win by one move. Um, instead of king g6, king f6 b5, a, b5, a6, um, bishop, d4. Bishop b8 doesn't make sense because after knight d8, I get an extra move. Mm -hmm. So knight d6, b4, um, bish knight b5, to bishop somewhere, uh, takes, takes, king e5, knight c6. And now we cannot go to d4, which <laughs> would have been nice, but king d5, you get to put the knight, knight on d4 a2. and knight a2. On. Yeah. That's very yeah. nice, or 93 also works. Yeah, Yeah. very nice calculation there at the end. How does it feel the, to start in such a bad note, but be able to pick yourself up and get those points near the end? 
Um, yeah, after the first three losses, um, um, I was obviously very disappointed with myself. But um, I mean, in sports, uh, it's uh, I think the most important part of uh, a tournament is how you finish, and uh, at least I managed to keep myself um, in the game and in the tournament. And it's still not the best results, but um, I I can I can at least end it on a good note and. It was a very nice opportunity for me to play here um, with such a strong field. So um, this is all also your first time playing here at the Saint Louis Chess yes. Club. What are your impressions about the club, about the organization of the event? Uh, the organization was pretty top, pretty much top notch. Um, also, in the first uh, few rounds, it took me a while to get accom uh, to get accom like you know to get accustomed to all the um, 